What up my freaks, Rubana Sensei here with part 3 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Carl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, or rather as we left off, Carl Franz after finishing off the Empire's secessionists moved via march stance to just outside Altdorf, where Kazrak the One-Eye has decided to attack him and take advantage of the march stance that we are in. Of course, Vigor in battle being low is a very, very big debuff and, and much more important in SFO than it is in vanilla, so I can see why the AI would want to take advantage. That said, we do have the settlement garrison, which will come in as a reinforcement, kind of unclear as to when, but I'm just going to assume at the exact same time as this guy because he's in the settlement, right? So they should in theory be at the exact same time, but I guess we're about to find out. Now we are facing off against a significant amount of beastmen warhounds, so we do have to watch our flanks quite a bit here. And we've got a Bestigor herd, we've got Razor Gord chariots, which are pretty nice and uh, fairly effective. Gonna have to try to gun those down as quick as we can. Minotaurs and then of course Kazrak himself who has very nice stats. Alrighty, well, it looks pretty fun. Uh, let's see what we can do even if our army is tired as heck. Well, Sigmar may watch, but you still gotta fight for your right to live. Alrighty, here we go. A bad vigor or broken vigor or low vigor, whatever. Our army is going to be very badly debuffed and thus very much in danger against the enemy army. If it weren't for the garrison, we probably would have a very difficult time here. But in a minute and 20 seconds, we will have the garrison come in and thus we have deployed reasonably close to them. Unfortunately for us, deploying reasonably close to them does mean that these woods are uh, kind of in our way but I decided to allow this anyway a because I kind of like this little uh, water area because it'll slow enemies down moving through it and uh, hopefully just trap them there and allow us to hurt them and B because if we were to drag the reinforcements elsewhere it would take longer for them to get on the field and that's also not necessarily something we want also before we get the battle proper joined I uh, just want to once again remind you guys to vote for the next camp campaign in the community tab of the channel if you haven't already. Sorry to keep annoying you about this, but if you haven't voted, the uh, Tomb Kings vote right now and for the last few days already has basically been tied between Arcan and Cetra and I really need that deadlock to break so I'm just going to keep annoying you guys until the deadlock is well and properly broken. They're all with, they're both within a few votes of each other which is why. Anyway, otherwise the setup is pretty simple. We are protecting our mortars which are all the way back here hopefully they don't fire into this tree I never even bothered to check uh, we have our uh, Empire archers right in the middle of the biggest portion of our formation where they'll hopefully be safe from the piles of enemy units uh, flanking we have the relatively hurt units of swordsmen but they are close to the edge of the map so they'll be able to move off the uh, map if they get badly hurt and then the full HP units on this side I will reposition the Reichsguard depending on where the enemy chariots go as they're going to be waiting specifically to hunt those guys down as otherwise they will hurt us pretty badly and of course we will be relying on the uh, hand gunners here and here to fire through the gaps in the lines and take out those uh, high uh, high value units like the minotaurs uh, the bestigors and kazrak himself if we can get a good line on him anyway that's it for the setup let's see about the battle being joined we can see the enemy warhounds is it Warhounds? Yes, it's Beastman Warhounds. Moving in and charging directly at our unit of, uh, or units. There's two hurt units here of Swordsmen. They're mostly here to just uh, block the enemy. We will, however, support them with our Free Company Militia. Gonna use our range capabilities on the Free Company Militia until they run out, and then only afterwards, of course, move them into melee. So we'll see. Unfortunately, the way that the enemy Warhounds moved in does mean that they essentially surrounded these four Swordsmen, and look how quickly the damage is being dealt to them. This is actually kind of shocking. I'm uh, quite impressed I gotta say, with these Beastmen Warhounds. 29 kills in only a few seconds. It seems like there were a lot more efficient killers than... Uh, uh, than... 
enemy infantry are. Though I guess we're about to find out. We also gotta remember that the debuffs from Vigor are pretty severe, so it shouldn't be all that surprising that our units are gonna die fairly quickly. Anyway, Ungor is charging into our other units of swordsmen, and our greatsword similarly holding the line against the enemy here in this little wooded territory. More enemy uh, units moving in here, and these are the best Agors, the best of the enemy, hence the best Agors. Uh, <laughs> I'll show myself that. Uh, moving in, and hopefully we'll be trying to hold them here long enough for our handgunners and co to do damage. Otherwise, over on the flanks, we've got a lot of action as well. Our poor halberdiers similarly got charged by those beastmen warhounds and similarly dropped very, very quickly in terms of HP. Almost makes me jealous and want some warhounds of our own. On the bright side, though, our Reichsguard did manage to catch those Razorgore chariots, and as we can see, they're already being damaged, whereas the Reichsguard are more or less fine. We've also got the Free Company militia moving in behind to start shooting said warhounds in the back and a single unit of Empire archers have peeled away from the main formation to target said warhounds as well as it's pretty apparent that we're gonna need help against them on top of that though the reinforcements are here we got two new lords on the field and a pile of garrison infantry and range units as well as two units of Empire Knights both of which we can use without uh, uh, without them having started with awful vigor there we go. We really needed all those extra melee units because our army currently is a little bit too range heavy, I want to say. Though I don't really personally count the uh, uh, the hybrid units, or not Thunderbolt coming down in the middle of the uh, Bestigors there. Uh, don't count the free company militia as really me or ranged units. And they're only temporary range units until they're somewhat out of uh, ammo and then they're melee all over again. Alrighty, well, it looks like the enemy have managed to break through our line a little bit, sending the archers and the swordsmen routing. We are going to contract our battle lines a little bit, as we can see, moving all of our range units behind here so that the reinforcements moving onto the field can take care of acting as the anvil. The flanks here, however, are going reasonably well. It looks like the Reichsguard will be able to kill those Razor Gore chariots and said chariots are unable to do anything to our pile of ranged units in the center. Our free company militia are still holding off the enemy units, though those uh, halberdiers are routing, and we're going to have to hope that the beastmen warhands have better things to do than chase them down and kill them all. Otherwise, it's just a matter of time until the enemy line that is... Uh, uh, that is being surrounded by our reinforcements collapses and when it does all these reinforcements will move on to the field and take care of those enemies that we couldn't thus far. We've also got a few archers peeling away from our reinforcement pile who are moving into the woods here and I'm going to start hitting the enemy in the center or in the back wherever they can. There we go, they've clearly begun at least a little bit. Nice job to this little garrison for mo or moving in in such a way that it allowed us to surround from three sides these forces, and it does look like they're going to start breaking. Very nice. Uh, looks like the Minotaurs have come out to play as well, and they are going after our Celestial Wizard. Gotta be careful with him, as he's already fairly low on HP, and these guys do hit pretty hard. Though if they knock him down, that's actually bad for them because they won't be able to uh, hurt him while he's invincible. He, however, is going to move away with very, very low HP, though. 40 HP. One or two more hits from one of those Minotaurs would finish him. And he's just going to walk out. Hopefully one of our own uh, crossbows, <laughs> there's an arrow sticking out of his neck, uh, doesn't finish him off. Although it looks like we are able to charge the Minotaurs with our knights in range focus. We'll see them off shortly. Carl is also still fighting. He's found a Bray Shaman. He's going to hit it, hopefully to prevent it from casting any more spirit leeches like we saw earlier. The balance of power has shifted very much in our favor at about 90%. And while Kazrak and a few other units are fighting, most of the enemies seem to be ready to rout. The uh, massive pile of reinforcements are certainly going to carry the day for us, and though we certainly saw how badly our army uh, collapsed, or how quickly our army collapsed with all that uh, vigor loss reduction, so we'll really have to be careful about moving in march stance. I definitely didn't care about doing so nearly as much when playing vanilla, but it's a much more risky proposition here. Which is a great thing. It should absolutely punish you for fighting with troops that are incredibly tired.
Alrighty, and I do believe the balance of power is moving forward once again. Kazrak fighting with the last gore herd, I think, out front. And there's a few more herds that are trying to move in, but we've also got handgunners focusing them now, rather than other units, which means these gores probably won't stand for long either. And get a few nice volleys in there. Yes, please fight for your right to live. I've been saying that for ages. Carl's riding around in the background, probably trying to find Kazrak to get a duel going. Though it might be a little bit too late now as the enemy army is liable to collapse at any second. In fact, it looks like the chain route is here and finally they will indeed collapse. A one last charge from the uh, Ungors with spears here. And then they're out. Unfortunately, these ones are too close to the map, and there is no way that we'll be killing them. Kazrak is probably also too fast for us to chase him down. He's at 55 speed, and thus almost double the speed of a standard infantry unit. So unless a ranged unit can kill him, it's uh, pretty unlikely. We do have two units of uh, knights on the field, though Empire Knights. Though Empire Knights are kind of meh. Hopefully they can at least damage the Bestigor herd. Actually, I want to see how effective things are chasing in SFO. So before these guys engage, we got 49 Bestigors left and 112 Ungors. Let's speed it up and let's see what those units have left by the time they get to the, uh, the edge of the field. Okay, from that charge, we lost. they lost 9 Bestigors and... A lot more Ungors. I guess the problem here is that the Empire Knights lack armor piercing, which means they're going to have a very difficult time killing the uh, Bestigors, which are pretty heavily armored. Yeah. I was really hoping to kill the Bestigor herd at the very least. In fact, I even decided to send the other Empire Knights to help out uh, against this herd. But alas, they're going to get off the field. Oh well, not a big deal, I'm sure we'll be fighting them again, and frankly that was such an enjoyable battle, I'd love to fight them again. A Pyrrhic victory, considering we did take some uh, fairly significant losses, but the AI wouldn't have attacked us uh, in March Stance if it didn't think it could either win or... Uh, cause severe damage so that makes sense uh, let's see what we've got and let's see where uh, wait can we heal here I yes we should be able to heal right away unless I'm mistaken so at least some of this will come back Ooh, alrighty, very nice fight. Gotta thank Kazrak for giving that to us. Unfortunately, we weren't able to completely destroy the enemy army, so they might come back in the near future, though I suppose they could attack our allies as well. I uh, guess we got, like, no prestige out of that. Huh, I wonder why. I feel like that would be worthy of some prestige, but oh well. Yeah, the positioning really did screw us a little bit there, but once again, it was the vigor that uh, you gotta watch out for. Now, we are going to, I guess, pardon the captives. We're probably gonna need the money more than anything at the moment. Kazrak will presumably move away somewhere, probably back to his main territory. Though I'm not sure, what is this, Marineburg or Marienburg, ooh, okay, well, that decision as to whether to declare war on Marienburg has been made for us, it looks like we're gonna be taking their stuff. Uh, you are going to attack one of the garrisons here. Mm, I mean, we could probably hurt the enemy army slightly by manually fighting this, probably very slightly, mind you. I wonder if they'd be able to fully heal up if we did. If we had some units in stock, I'd do this just to destroy the enemy mortar, which is the thing that tempts me most. And now oh, they got Knights Panther and Knights of the Blazing Sun, so at least they've got some nice knights there. You know, let's fight this super quick. I'm going to speed through it, just max speed. I just want to see whether we have a uh, wooded territory where we could hide some units and then potentially attack the mortar. I'm actually not sure we'd be able to kill it fast enough, but I'd still like to give it a try, just in case. Alrighty, so I think we'll set up here, wherever this, uh, whatever this object is. Okay, so it's a rock. Okay, so what we'll do is, we will take, let's say, I don't know, a couple of, well... 
Would one swordsman unit be enough to take out the mortar? I'm not sure. You know what, let's go for one sword and one pikeman. What's the damage on the swords? 30 versus 35. Okay, so the pikes do more damage, but considering the amount of knights the enemy has, probably should use those. We'll hide those there. Then, we're going to put our units here. In piles. Put these units behind them, or like this. We'll put the crossbows there. We are not expecting to hold the line or anything. I mostly just want to waste the enemy's uh, time while we try to go after that mortar. Set you up our single mortar here as well. All in a blob. You guys good? And let's speed it up to max. Where's that mortar? Hopefully they don't move and sight the these units. Can we move a little bit? Yeah, good. All right, everybody, guard stance. Don't skirmish. Just try to uh, just try to give the enemy time, or to get to us, so that we can go for that mortar. Okay, looks like all the knights are moving out this way, so we're gonna have to hold the line at least a little bit. Uh, they're not abandoning the mortar. Oh wow. Huh. Okay, and they are now, but so are we moving. All right, let's just let this happen. No, honestly, the enemy mortar might do damage to itself. And those guys are going to be overrun very quickly. Come on, come on. You're not on a horse, are you? No, you're not. Well, just stay there for a few seconds, man. Let's see if we can get to this before all the rest of our forces route. If they route, the enemy mortar won't die. Yeah, it looks like this won't work. I think these guys will route before the... Uh, before it's over. If we have a few seconds to chase down the mortar, maybe, maybe, ah, come on. <laughs> the route isn't happening yet, the chain route, I mean. 20 units left, come on, don't chain route, you guys. You got to, oh, so close, so damn close. I don't know how many units were left, but I think if we had a few more seconds, we probably would have gotten it. I would at least hope that at least some of the models there are dead. A little bit annoying to lose this territory, but Carlo's pretty close by. We could probably just take it back immediately or a turn afterwards. Shouldn't be a problem at all. New ideas lead to trouble. Advice from a dwarf master engineer to an apprentice. Sounds like uh, Thorak trained that master engineer. Just use quarrelers and terrible bolt throwers. And you wonder- yes, we did destroy the mortar, alright, that worked out very well then. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, they're gonna take that back, but just like our garrison, they'll probably have no garrison basically to defend that with, so we just freely attack it. Lovely. And huh, I just saw something happening- A quest has been issued, mighty lord. A great adventure beckons. Be wary though, for while the potential rewards are great- all right, all right, we are very wary, very wary. Beast Slayer, we will fight at some point, but not right now. And, ooh, hello, what do we have here? Uh, Fealty of Middenland. We can increase that, but frankly, we don't really care about... Well, then again, if I recall correctly, and I'm not 100% sure of this, if we... Get them to fealty 10, but don't accept the confederation. We can use that to get more imperial authority, which is a bunch of buffs. You know what? Let's support Midland's argument, but uh, let's give this a quick read first. At a recent congregation of the Elector Counts, there was a lengthy discussion about the separation of the religious cults from matters of imperial policy. There is much polarization in the group on what is a highly charged issue. Eventually, an argument breaks out between the Electors of Ostermark and Middenland, who are op on opposite sides of the argument, with both looking to you to lend your voice to their argument. You have said little about your thoughts on the subject until now. You feel little will come of this debate, but a leader of your standing cannot be seen to sit on the fence on matters of great import such as this. Only that were true in real life. Support Minland's argument just for the fact that uh, if they die again, we can re-raise them again, just keep getting more fealty from them. And pl Oh, Hawkland's gone. Well, yeah, we predicted that Hawkland would be gone. And Carl's got himself a little bit of extra... Campaign line of sight, chance to inc intercept enemies in underway beast paths or world routes, and ambush chance from defeating Kazrak, free iron curse icon, and hey, a free scribe as well. Ranked up in own territory after winning three or more battles. And hi, huh, you got this as well. Swell. Settlement lost Dale Hart, not to worry. And we'll be taking that back. Oh, we actually could move to Weissman immediately, but we have bigger fish to fry, I think. Carl, you in fact cannot reach the territory. 
Now, you have the ability to replenish in neutral territory, yes? So that means we can move to here. And then, oh, no, we can't because, wait. We can put you into encamp stance and then not suffer chaos attrition. So just go this way. And then we'll cross tail heart next turn. And then what we'll do, and ooh, whoa, 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 looks like Eric Zifflin and got taken out. Okay, wait, that's concerning. And that is concerning because that means Helmgart might get attacked. What we're going to do then, Defender of Men, eh? Gregor Arodziner, I think you might be a good, uh, good unit to defend. On the other hand, though, if we use a Huntsman General to defend, let me just see here. You can get Experienced Hunter to buff up Archers slightly, which we could probably recruit very cheaply there. Hmm. Oh, also, we can use the Recruiter to recruit more stuff for Carl. And while we're at home, this guy's recruiting. Watch him get a Mortar back. No, no, there's no way. He only has Aleheart here, so all he can get is Pikemen and Swords. What if he'd attack Carl in the field? Well, if he does, good luck to him. Uh, we're not in uh, we're we're not in vigor or loss or whatever this time around. Oh I damn, that no did, that took options. our uh, our barracks though. Hmm. Well then, perhaps it was a good move. Uh, though they're gonna lose Marineburg, so not so much really. Uh, you are going to keep saving this point. We are going to get fields here, and then. Hmm. Not. I wonder if this guy's going to rec well, he's going to recruit anyway. Yeah, you know what? Let's build the Defender of Men guy. And just because I like the idea of the reload and ammunition increase while under siege. Perfect for defending a fort like this. And you start on a barded warhorse, eh? Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, do you have to be a specific level to get Grand Soulfire? You do not? Oh, you can start with Grand Soulfire. Well, that's just lovely. Also, what do we have in these decrees here? Melee attack when fighting against the Vampire Counts, Tomb Kings, and Vampire Co. So we can build you specifically to hold against the Vamps if we wanted to. We could also build you out to be a constructor by getting Time of Peace, which may not be a bad idea. And, oh, recruitment cost minus 20. And here I was using the other guy as the recruiter. Hmm. Yes. So you have the... Yeah, but you have the 25%... A reduction. Hmm. Your recruitment could be basically extremely cheap if we combine it with time of pe or uh, t time of war and leader of renown. Surely tempting. Well, either way, let's. For now, we're gonna get inspiring presence and we're gonna get a hold the line to buff everybody while presumably you defend. Now let's get you some basic troops like archers to help out on said defense, if it's needed to do so. These guys might not declare war on us, but I'm pretty sure they will. They always do, so it's uh, kind of an inevitability. Carl, let's give you your level ups just in case. In case they attack, that is. Ooh, and another thing before I forget. You know, let's just do that first. Uh, I want to ask you, Mr. Toddy, to join the war against Kazrak. Ah, you won't do it. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping we could get him to fight Kazrak and just have Kazrak kill him again, which would uh, which would work out quite well for us. But apparently not so much. His army is still alive out there, so it will come back. I do wonder if it'll try to jump over Altdorf and go for something else like Grunberg. We'll need to uh, keep leveling those up, but either way. Uh, do we need to build something here? We can build another archer for Carl, though frankly, I think maybe instead we build a couple more pikes. And we'll replace one of the archer units. I think we need a little bit more melee, especially if we're going to be facing off against piles of uh, knights and uh, and piles of beastmen. All right. Well, with that, we're going to check diplomacy. Zifflin is probably going to die. In fact, I'm surprised they're... Oh, well, I guess they only have Montfort. Yeah, so I guess they are still alive. So let's do non-aggression pact with them just to get the last of their money before they're gone. And then we got Perava, who are fighting the Wood Elves, so we're going to ignore you. Ostermark and Ostland, you are both wanting military access. Sure. Keep those relationships going. And give us money while you're at it. Tribute to Altdorf. And that is it. All right. 
Yeah, we gotta get that Imperial Authority back. Definitely don't want it to drop down to negative two. Also, if we get somebody to nine prestige, we'll pop Imperial Machinations in order to increase fealty. And not adjutants. What did I want to check? I wanted to check the electric counts. Yeah, so we have seven here, we have eight here, we have seven here. All of these are pretty good. Maintain their relationships. I feel like Talabeklan is the way to go for us because you get unlock Sutsun's guns from it, which should be quite useful, especially for a melee focused army. As they do no friendly fire but are mortars. What do you give us? Stubborn, Bull, Stubborn Bulls Empire Knights. Okay. And we could certainly build a uh, master lord around that. And you give us Stir River Patrol crossbows. So more powerful crossbows with fire attacks. Mm, Eldred's Guard Spears. We definitely want Null and Iron Sides for the better handgunners. We cannot. Oh, more handgunners, the Bordermen. Anti infantry can't attack air projectile. This is 100 range. I don't remember what these guys are like. Are these guys like shotguns? Considering they're very low range, that might be the case. Might also be nice. Projectile explosion, yeah, oh. Wait, are they grenade launchers, maybe? But like in handgunner form? I guess we'll see when we take Marineburg or Marienburg. Uh, let's see, are we ready to end the turn and fight again, possibly? No, we are not, because I forgot to spend the points. Okie dokie, so. Pointage. We could buff up Carl personally. We could also, let's see, we should probably start moving through the red line a little bit more. Or we keep holding on to the points for all these upgrades. It's probably still better to hold on to those points, just because getting on a steel doesn't really help us all that much. Even if we do have a pile of great swords that we'll be getting in this army. And while Pistol Core is great, I'm not entirely sure we'll have the amount of points available to get Pistol Core as well as Honest Steel, as well as possibly several other things. You know what, maybe between the episodes I'll count how many uh, how many points we'll have. I mean, if we skip, if we skip, skip the blue line completely, we could go fairly deep into the red line, but would it be worth it to buff only a couple things? Probably not. Uh, you. You could get scouting, we could make wind blast cheaper, which could be very well useful. Although Ernon's Thunderbolt and Harmonic Convergence are quite useful. I don't want to get evasion. Comet of Cassandora is pretty useful. Chain Lightning occasionally, but I don't trust Vortexes. Now let's get another point in Ernon's. Roiling Skies will give us no benefit early on. And when less is a little bit too expensive in terms of casting cost, because we have no mana right now. And I believe that's it. Alright, let's see if these guys actually decide to attack Carl or not. We are pretty badly hurt, so maybe we can uh, maybe we can force them to attack us and they'll screw themselves over. A building upgrade available. Uh, ooh, wait, I just thought of something. What if Ubersreich gets attacked? You know what, I don't want Ubersreich to get taken. Now, it does have a better garrison than what just fought, but we could get another temporary lord here for one turn, just in case. Uh, another Arch Lecter, perhaps, because it'll give him... Uh... Yeah, another Arch Lecter for the Grand Soul Fire. Alright, I like so. Good job on the opportunism to the AI, though, like that. Hold the line and Inspiring Presence. Of course, we'll delete him next turn, so we don't have to pay anymore. Building upgrade available, we will skip, and let's end the turn. Let's see what Emil von Corden does here. We got lots of lords, everybody's defending something. All right, where are you, Marienburg? And they will indeed attack Carl. All right, let's see if that's a good idea for them. Uh, though, wait. Hmm. What is this? You've got a reinforcement. I wonder, what would happen if we retreated? How far did they have to travel to get here? This is some random reinforcement. Would it still be able to reinforce? Would they still attack with the reinforcement? Hmm. But we would move out of the encamp stance if we did this as well. Considering the fact that our army has damage, that is dangerous. And they do have a ton of knights here. You know what? Let's try backing off. 
And let's see what they do. Yes, they will attack without the reinforcement. Granted, we're not in an camp stance, but that uh, that is quite a bit better. Uh, let's fight. Alrighty, here we go. The enemy has braved attacking us again, and we are pretty darn badly hurt coming off of that fight with Kazrag, so we will have to be careful here. I'm I'm absolutely loving this great early game uh, that we're getting with battles that you actually have to work for, which is generally not so much the case in the early game. Plus, in both of this campaign and my Belagar campaign, and going on concurrently, I've been fighting, been fighting a lot with uh, damaged armies and the units that have already suffered severe casualties in uh, multiple battles, uh, which is also pretty fun as well, as it uh, is definitely more likely for a unit to actually die in a battle rather than just be badly hurt. Anyway, we've got some Knight's Panther and I believe Knights of the Blazing Sun that we're facing off against. Knights of the Blazing Sun absolutely look fantastic and we will be building an army themed around at least some of them at some point. I forgot whether I mentioned this or not earlier, but the uh, the Grand Master Lord has a buff essentially for every single knightly order. As in, you can pick which knightly order that Grand Master is associated with. So, I think it's six different ones, or it could be more or less, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll have to have a Grand Master at the very least for one of each of those. Though maybe one of the Electric Count Lords is also one? Hmm. Either way. Themes aplenty with different types of knights. But there's also just so much going on in this roster that we'll have to theme. we also got Sigmarite theme, and we've got the uh, various engineer type units. We've got the uh, uh, all of the Imperial Supply different units to build around. And of course the Wolfkin and Knights of the White Wolf and stuff. Yeah, should be a very fun. Alrighty, well anyway. In the meantime, on Grand Masters aside, we've got a battle to fight here, and let's not be too distracted. We've got some enemy pistoliers moving in foolishly by themselves, riding up all the way, basically right beside our units, nearly in melee, only to take a bunch of crossbows and handgunner bullets to their primarily horses, most likely, but uh, certainly enough to damage the unit and force it to rout. Kind of a waste of a unit real quickly, but hey, I'm hardly going to complain about it. It. Over on the flanks, we do have more Knights of the Blazing Sun and Empire Knights ready to move in and hit our units. We have a unit of Halberdiers as well as a unit of Free Camp or several units of Free Company Militia blocking the side. And before I forget, uh, just to show the setup here, we're obviously using this little cliff or plateau thing as a uh, as a pseudo wall and uh, just going to try to hold off the enemy there. We've got the two units of handgunners who are able to fire through the gaps in our lines as usual and then the Empire Archers behind them. And the Reichsguard were right in the back of our entire line true, who are ready essentially to move where they're needed the most which is looking like they're going to need to stop the Knights of the Blazing Sun from hitting us over on this side. Also fortunately the enemy doesn't have a mortar or artillery of their own or otherwise this setup wouldn't have worked as we're a little bit too tight and um, too close together in terms of our formation so that's nice. And we would have set up differently otherwise, but this is what we're going with right now, and our own mortar can at least fire. Anyway, here come the Empire Knights and the Knights of the Blazing Sun, charging into uh, Halberdiers. I would be curious to see how effective a unit of Halberdiers would be in a one-on-one -on -one against one of these uh, one of these knightly units. Damn, it's a nice unit, though. Or at the very least, it looks nice. I'd like to compare their effectiveness versus the uh, Reichsguard later on, and it looks like they don't want to be fighting Halberdiers, charging instead into the flanks of one of our blocks of swordsmen in the main line, but that's going to be just fine because the Halberdiers are going to chase them down and hit them in the back and hopefully surround them right after. Plus, on top of that, there are uh, handgunners firing into them, so not such a great thing. And Ernon's Thunderbolt coming down in the piles of the Knights of the Blazing Sun, which are being blocked by Reichsguard here. And I guess we can compare their stats directly. 41-41 versus 39-54 on the Reichsguard. So it looks like the Reichsguard are a little bit more defensive, which is lovely, I guess. 
but of course ours are pretty badly hurt, so we will have to be careful there. And thus we are going to move two units of Free Company Militia to essentially stand here and fire into the sides of those Knights of the Blazing Sun with their armor-piercing bullets, even if their missile strength is low, and of course when they run out they can simply block them as melee. As long as these guys can't move past this, we still have our main line intact, and can, it can continue functioning as it currently is. I also want to point out that this second unit of Empire Knights here is getting kind of wrecked by our Empire, uh, or our uh, Free Company Militia rather, so I'm proud of those guys as well. And Carl has charged into combat, fighting off some of those Knights of the Blazing Sun as well as enemy swordsmen. He also wanted to get right in the middle of our formation to buff his uh, melee attack buff for everybody around him. Well, it should be useful while we still have troops to make use of it. Our great swords, as usual, holding the line, though now in very, very small numbers, as they were quite hurt in the battle with Kazrak. They are also getting crossbows raining down upon them, but they should be able to deal with the enemy swordsmen or spearmen without uh, too much trouble. We are going to move a unit of uh, regular swordsmen to reinforce them and then essentially intersperse the remaining great swords with these guys so that they have a little bit of an extra meat shield we also have knight's panther charging in and that's uh, i did see knight's panther i wasn't crazy i guess lots of different knightly orders in marie and marienburg here yeah well, they're going to just get stopped right here, unfortunately for them, by this unit of swords, which means our mortar can continue working and firing into the ground right behind them, which certainly works. The balance of power is nearly even, but it's still in the enemy's favor, so we do have to remain careful. I am moving the Celestial Wizard in periodically just to hit an enemy once in order to apply the uh, blinded... Uh, in order to apply the blind debuff and then moving him out because he only does have 335 HP. It does look like this unit of Knight Bla Knights of the Blazing Sun is down to half HP here due to the Free Company Militia firing into their sides. So that's certainly working for us. And these guys seem to want to ignore the Free Company Militia in favor of fighting enemy knights, which kind of does make sense. I feel like that's exactly what the knights would uh, react like to some degree. It probably would feel it's more honorable to fight the enemy knights. Alrighty, well, our main line is still holding, though the unit numbers are very much dwindling. The handgunners can still fire over the heads of our, uh, of our units into all those cavalry. Unfortunately, one of our handgunners is now being targeted by the enemy crossbows and is starting to drop in the uh, numbers of units. We did manage to see off that knights of those Empire Knights and our Free Company Militia while nearly out of ammunition and are victorious at holding the flank. Main line still holds, and the rest of the bullets are going to start moving into the back of these poor spearmen. And there we go. Even as these guys charge towards the enemy crossbows, which are still firing, because we have really nobody to attack the crossbows other than our mortar, and frankly, it's a little bit busy on the front lines. Unfortunately, now these swordsmen that were holding this flank have collapsed, and the enemy Knights Panther have charged towards our Empire archers. Karl Franz is actually going to have to peel away from combat and try to charge those Knights Panther to hold them long enough. It looks like the uh, Reichsguard have also routed off of the feet but we are still firing at the Knights of the Blazing Sun from multiple directions now. Handgunner units and Empire Archers have all turned around while the Free Company Militia continues to hold ground. Free Company Militia certainly came in very handy in this particular battle. And we've got more to come in and continue to hold and now that they're out of ammunition. Lovely. You gotta love those hybrid units. And yeah, the Knights of the, the Knights Panther destroying one of our archer units, but having a little bit of a tough time killing Carl, who is knocking them around. Although all the anti-large coming in from those spikes probably isn't doing him any favors. I'm sure he can hold ground for at least a little while, even if he is by himself. Our other unit of handgunners continues to kill enemies and has seen off that unit of spears. I'm hoping that it shatters soon. The balance of power is perfectly even at 50% now, and it does look like both armies have lost roughly half of their, uh, have their units. That said, a lot more of the enemy army does look like it's routing. Carl, however, is also hurt, or very badly hurt, I should say. 176 HP remaining, but he is able to get out and and the Knight's Panther are about to rout themselves. Our great swords have come back and are moving in to fight the Knight's Panther. Apply some of that armor piercing as well. While our archers continue to fire and our handguns continue to do the same. 
Ah, there we go. Looks like the balance effect is very, very slightly in our favor now. We were also able to see off the Knight's Panther over on this side of the map. Gonna charge right back into them with our free company. Though a decent amount of them will go flying, and I do have to wonder whether these guys are dead. Nope, I guess that wasn't a far enough fall. Unfortunate for the Knight's Panther, who are now exhausted wavering. Whereas we're fresh but shaken. And looks like Carl has decided to run off the map. I'm actually surprised that Carl isn't unbreakable by his very nature. But to be fair, it feels like a lot of the legendary lords, from a lore perspective, are probably unbreakable. Like, I feel like Carl wouldn't flee the field until his men did as well. If they retreated. He'd certainly try to be in the vanguard. Or the rear guard, rather. No, I'm sure his uh, Reichsmarschall or whoever would try to convince him that uh, that's not such a good idea. Anyway, let's see about the balance of power. Looks like it's actually shifted in the enemy's favor a little bit, with Carl having moved out the field and our unit's uh, numbers having dwindled. That said, a lot of the enemy army that's still on the field is actually routing, so it would be fairly quick to take them out. Uh, we have, let's see, one two, three, four, five viable units left, while the enemy has potentially a decent amount more. Um, but we are about to kill off these crossbowmen who are stuck between one of our units of archers and a unit of free company militia again. Really gotta give it up to the free company militia today. I like them a lot more than I like the archers, I'll say that much. Speaking of the archers, looks like they're going to book it and they're going to get chased down by the Knight's Panther. The Free Company Militia are going to peel away, having routed the enemy archers and charge directly into the enemy swordsmen. Fortunately, they were only tired where the enemy was very tired and they shattered upon the charge. We still have this unit at roughly half HP and the second unit of Free Company Militia coming back, having chased those Knight's Panther off the field. The balance of power has once more shifted back towards us and now it's just the enemy lord. It's actually just the enemy lord lord on the field. It looks like a few of the enemy units will probably come back. This swordman unit is wavering, but fighting. I'm gonna take a few volleys from our archers even as they get attacked by the enemy lord here. And we still have our mortar firing, though our mortar only has a single mortar now, having had all the other uh, uh, all the other models of mortars have been destroyed by the enemy lord. All right, can we see these swordsmen off? A few more drop, but they do get the charge in on those archers. I actually decided to counter charge with the archers, even if they are weak in melee, just to close with the enemy a little bit sooner and to allow our free company militia to hit said enemy in the back. Man, we're down to just a couple units now, and yes, it looks like with the charge, the enemy morale a broken. This unit of swordsmen is now shattered. In fact, a unit of uh, Empire Archers has come back, and it looks like we now have the advantage on the field. Still have to kill the enemy lord, however, but the Free Company Militia have him surrounded. The archers are obviously going to be wasting their time fighting him, so they're actually just going to chase enemy uh, enemies that are routing and not shattered instead. What a glorious battle, though. Damn. And once again, gotta give uh, props to the AI for the opportunism here. I mean, Marienburg would probably never have gotten a better chance than when we were badly damaged and when one of our newly taken settlements was exposed. So it was a good move on their part. Unfortunately, though, if they lose this, this is probably their main and only army, so that's going to be a problem. If we manage to destroy all those knights especially, it'll take them some time to rebuild, and by then, we'll probably be able to move to Marienburg. Will we win, though? It looks like we will. The enemy lord is now wavering, shaken, and if he routes, the rest of the army is done. The balance of power may still be pretty much even, but he's still the only unit on the field, and he has to work his way through two units of Free Company Militia, which looks like it's just too many. Beautiful. And the cheers are there, which means the chain route is here, the balance of power is fully ours, and we are done. Ooh. A very close battle, though, I gotta say. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what fighting, I mean, similar units, except I, I would say their army was better than ours by virtue of uh, having all those knights. 
And there we go, the free company. Bringing down the enemy lord as well on top of all that. I, I, I'm now going to be sad when we eventually have to delete them out of the army, considering just how much work they uh, they did. Gotta double check, is there a free company... Uh, is there a free company unit that we can get as an Imperial Supply unit? We'll check later. <laughs> I feel like we need uh, feel like we need to keep one of them. Uh, anyway, there we go. A Pyrrhic victory, and it certainly was. Most of our army ran off the field. I don't know whether any units got destroyed, but let's find out. Let's see what we have left, and let's see whether we remain viable enough to attack them and finish off that army, because of course any enemy units that escaped will have survived. Ooh, alrighty, what a fun fight. Carl has a sliver of HP remaining, but we will be able to heal everybody up by at least a little bit. Uh, we did lose one swordsman unit, but it's reasonably inconsequential, and we should be able to get back fairly quickly, and state troops aren't worth much. Anyway, uh, sadly we couldn't destroy any of those damn knights, so we will have to deal with them again, but at least the male is dead. Uh, let's take on those captives, and then... Let's see. Will the attrition kill Carl? If it does, it'll be annoying that he'll be off the map for a few turns. Uh, army retreats, yes, Emperor Carl Franz has the Scarecrow banner. Oh, you can get free vigor loss reduction. Swell. And he Some was not... Oh, he went to Aleheart. Right, okay, so great. Uh, the attrition didn't kill us even though we have 22 HP remaining. Now, I that might know. mean... I hmm. Do we attack again? I feel like we do. I feel like we do. We can probably kill off both of these armies by attacking Magnus Ivan, Magnus Ivan the Crazy. We can draw in the second army, kill them both, and then we'll see whether we have enough uh, movement remaining to attack the uh, main settlement here. The enemy is so badly hurt that uh, we should be able to kill them with our range superiority, which we do still have a fairly considerable amount of. Uh, otherwise, I do believe I'm going to call the episode here. Oh, we can even reinforce with Recruiter. Get a little bit of extra troops in there. Lovely. Alright, so those guys should be dead, which means we'll take Aleheart back without too much trouble, which also means we will be able to attack Marineburg without them having an army there and likely take it reasonably quickly. Now, I suppose it'll depend on how much we can heal Carl's army, but we'll have to find out next time. It looks like we're getting some pretty damn glorious battles already in the early game, and I'm loving how much of a, more of a difficult start this has been than it would be in vanilla. And vanilla nine turns is like nine settlements and uh, every battle is uh, a little I bit too not. easy no. yeah all right i can't wait to play more so stay tuned for it don't forget to leave a like and comment all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching